So I pulled out a pair of these uh, old passive IR sensors recently, and I thought it would be fun to have a bit of a play around with them. I was originally going to uh, reprogram uh, this PIC uh, uh, microcontroller here, but unfortunately I found out later on that it's a uh, one-time programmable and can't be reflashed. So what I plan to do is um, take this uh, LHI uh, 968 uh, pyroelectric infrared detector, uh, and I'll include a data sheet, a data sheet link below, uh, reverse engineer the circuit around it, and uh, sort of try and uh, replicate it myself um, using an ESP32 instead of, the, uh, instead of this uh, microcontroller right here. So let's take a bit of a closer look at the board itself and its various big bits and bits and parts. Okay, so starting uh, up the top, uh, the top left-hand corner here, uh, this is the power supply circuitry. It uses a 78L05 in an 8-pin package. Here's the uh, the pick itself, and you can see it's a, uh, a 12C671 uh, microcontroller. And then if we look around the uh, the back of the circuit here, you can see that uh, this is basically a uh, read relay that the microcontroller uh, controls. And there's some, uh, some caps on this side too. So turning back over, uh, the PIC does three things on this, uh, on this particular circuit. Uh, it flashes this uh, status LED here, and there's a number of different uh, uh, features of that. It sort of flashes on startup until it's ready, and then it flashes when it... Uh, it's detected, uh, uh, it's detected some kind of infrared uh, signal. Uh, it uh, turns off and on the relay that's on the reverse side there. So it uh, turns it off and on through this. And interestingly, you can see here, there was an or originally a spot for a, looks like a transistor or a FET here. Uh, but it uh, basically um, uh, is directly connected to the, uh, the relay's um, actuation circuitry. And then the final thing that it does, which is of interest to us, is it receives an analog signal from the uh, sensor um, and it determines from that whether there's an IR detection event. So speaking of the sensor itself, the sensor's on the reverse of the, um, of the board here and uh, there it is there. Um, like I said, I'll include a, a link to, um, uh, to the data sheet below, but it's basically a pyroelectric sensor with uh, uh, with two sensors uh, embedded in there, and there's also a FET um, that's uh, that is in source follower configuration on the output side. And we'll cover that late, a bit later on. When we get to the circuit. Well, the rest of the circuitry surrounds this uh, uh, LM358 to dual op amp. And that's what I'll be duplicating on the proto board. So let's have a look at the uh, circuit in a little more detail. Okay, so here's the uh, sensor circuitry that I've been able to uh, reverse engineer. Uh, and I was able to ca capture most of the capacitor values just by pulling the, uh, pulling the uh, SMD caps off circuit and then uh, testing them externally. Uh, but there were some I missed, so uh, uh, those ones were a guess uh, from me. So starting from the left hand side, uh, firstly we have the LHI 968 sensor and as you can see on that there's three connections. The first of those is the drain connection through which uh, the supply comes. The second is the ground, just connected to ground. And then finally uh, we have the source here and it's the source from which a very small IR detection voltage is taken. And as I mentioned, uh, this is in source follower configuration. So here's the, uh, uh, the source resistor and capacity here um, that, that are required after the circuit. Okay, so moving a little bit to the right, we have this DC coupled amplifier in a non-inverting configuration uh, that's using one half of the uh, LM358. We've got this uh, C4 right here, um, which ensures only the uh, changing part of the signal is amplified and not the DC component. Uh, one of the things I did forget to mention off this uh, passive IR uh, sensor is uh, the voltage here sits at around about 0.7 of a volt and then uh, IR detection events uh, vary uh, above and below that uh, by around about uh, 5 to 10 millivolts. So this 18K resistor and uh, 680K resistor here are used to control the gain of the, uh, of the amplifier. So it's around about a, a, 
around about 37, I believe, is the uh, is the ratio between those. Then we have this uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor over here to uh, make sure that it's only uh, uh, amplifying the low frequency content, not the high frequency content. After that, uh, it's AC coupled through to the next stage, and the next stage is a uh, an inverting uh, amplifier setup with 185 5k resistor and 18 K. So this gives about a tenfold uh, voltage uh, increase here. And again, we have this uh, 47 nanofarad capacitor right here to uh, avoid amplifying higher frequency content. Uh, the other aspect of this is uh, this uh, sets the bias of the output to around about 2.2 volts. So the signal coming out of here, greatly amplified, is uh, around about uh, uh, is biased around about 2.2 volts. So these two uh, um, op amps uh, serve to amplify the original signal by around about 50 dBs of gain. Um, now in the original circuit, at the output here, this output went straight to one of the pins on the PIC uh, microcontroller. Uh, in my circuit, I'm just going to send it to uh, uh, to one of the pins on the ESP32 and use 80, um, the, the internal analog to digital converters in the uh, uh, ESP32 to control this, to, to uh, interpret the, the value of the voltage here. I've just got a little uh, xenodiode here that's uh, a 3.3 volt xenodiode to protect the uh, GPIOs on the ESP32. So what we'll do now is uh, I've got some... Um, I've got some uh, probes set up on the original circuit right here. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll get this on the oscilloscope and uh, we'll see what uh, is actually happening to the voltage signal right here um, by moving my hand uh, backwards and forwards in front of the, uh, of the IR sensor. So uh, let's move over to the oscilloscope and see that. Okay, so here's the uh, test setup right here. I've got the scope uh, probe connected right here which is the output of that uh, second op amp uh, so let's get this sensor away from me a bit and uh, and then we can have a look at the signal on the oscilloscope all right so here's the uh, signal on the oscilloscope i've got the center of the oscilloscope right at 2.2 volts and it's uh, dc coupled so let me wave my hand in front of this and you'll see the behavior so you can see that behavior there where it uh, basically as I put my hand in front of it, it goes up. As I take my hand away, it, uh, it goes all the way down to zero volts. Um, so there we go. So let's have a look at the same behavior on uh, the, the homebrew circuit that I've got. Okay, so here's the, uh, the homebrew circuitry here. And uh, sorry for the rat's nest here. It's, uh, it's a little difficult <laughs> to get all the resistors and capacitors in place. Here's the sensor. Uh, so the black wire is ground, the red wire is the, um, uh, the drain connection, and the green is the source connection where the, uh, where the signal comes out. Uh, I've got that going into uh, one of the uh, pin 33 on the ESP32. Uh, pretty, pretty much all of the pins on the ESP32 can be configured as an ADC pin. So, uh, And here's that 3.3-volt uh, uh, Zeno that I have uh, here. The signal actually goes up to around about 3.7 volts. Uh, so I thought I'd throw a zine on there to protect it. Uh, it does change the waveform a little bit. And then a final note on this, uh, the, the red and the, the blue LED. Uh, basically, as the signal goes above, uh, above a, uh, that mean value, uh, it flashes red. If it goes below that, it flashes blue. But let's, anyway, have a look at the signal on the oscilloscope. Okay, so here's the signal on the oscilloscope, and the configuration's the same as the... Uh... Uh, as the original, I've, it, the, the signal is centered around about 2.2 volts. So let me move my hand in front of the, the sensor. You can see it goes up. As I pull my hand away, it go, goes up and then down again. So let me do that again. There's my hand in front of it. So you can see that the uh, sensor is reacting in a similar fashion to the, uh, to the original. Um, and then just to uh, see the operation of the, uh, of the LEDs, let me just pan back a little bit. So as I move my hand in front, it goes red, I pull it away, it turns blue, and then finally goes out. Uh, now this uh, sensor is uh, reasonably, uh, uh, reasonably um, sensitive. 
Uh, now, the original sensors, when, the, when it was in the case, had these uh, mirrored uh, IR reflectors in them with the sensor at the focus of the, uh, of the reflector there. Um, so it's not quite, a sen quite as sensitive out of the package. But you can see, uh, let me just uh, step back and uh, walk through the, uh, the beam. Let it settle down a bit first. So I'm just going to walk from uh, right to left. And then when I'm done, it's still there, I'll walk from left to right. And you can see that uh, I'm about probably six feet back from the, uh, from the signal itself. But anyway, I, I thought uh, people might enjoy this little bit of uh, reverse engineering. Um, so that's all for now. Um, catch you all later.